Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I am your host, Angelina Wilson, and this is the case of Martin Allen. Um, Martin vanished from his Kensington, England home. He had first lived in a council flat. A council flat is... Well, and in England, it's their version of subsidized housing or low-income housing, that kind of a thing. Um, and they ended up moving to the Australian High Commissioner's uh, to a cottage on his residence because his father became the chauffeur for him. Um, and they made a lot more money and uh, they, were, they were next door to the De Beers jewelry family and Margaret Thatcher got to know them and yeah it was it was quite a, a change for them oh excuse me when he left his school on the day of 5 November 1979 he actually traveled home from school on the London Underground and his intention was to go see his brother Bob who lived near Holloway Road but he needed to go home first in order to collect some money. At around 3.50 p.m. about 10 minutes before he said goodbye to some school friends at King's Cross Station and set off in the direction of the Piccadilly Line platform to travel home. Initial reports state that that was the last confirmed sighting. However, his brother Kevin says he, he was home at 5 o'clock and went right back out. Um, but Kevin said, no, that's not true. I never said that. The article was inaccurate. So, he did not reach Bob's residence. Family were not alarmed that he did not return home as they assumed he had stayed with Bob when it got too late. After having spent the following day not hearing any word from Alan, his mother rang Bob at 7 o'clock in the evening. He had thought Martin had gone home due to fireworks from Guy Fox Day, F-A-W-K-E-S, celebrations. He was an important person in England. Um, and when they found his best friend, Robert, <laughs> and found out that he had not been in school that day, then they knew something was seriously wrong. Um, they searched his bedroom for five hours, didn't even find a fingerprint. They searched everywhere for him. Um, He was wearing a denim jacket and trousers. Pants. <laughs> Fancy word for pants. Or an old world word for pants. Um, can I open this? Come on. There we go. Um, they went on television and a male witness came forward to report seeing a man accompanying a boy acting suspiciously at Gloucester Road Station at around 4.15. The witness reported the man standing with his arm around the shoulder of the boy, who resembled Martin Allen. The boy appeared distressed, and both parties appeared to be nervous as they got onto a train. The witness saw the man prod the boy in the back and overheard him telling the boy not to try to run when the pair left the train at Earl's Court Station. The witness described the man as six feet tall in his thirties, well built, with very blonde hair and mustache, and wearing a denim jacket and trousers. Um, it was London's biggest ever house-to-house -house search trying to identify this man. They did do an artistic impression. Um,
Whoa! Another one of Alan's brothers, Jeffrey, claims that early on in the investigation, um, the lead detective in the case told them, quote, that there were high up people involved and that they should stop talking and, quote, not take it further because someone will get hurt. Excuse me? I think I would be going to the police chief and saying, what the blazes is this dude talking about? Um, ew. Okay, in 1998, the police in Liverpool, acting on an anonymous tip-off, had discovered a shrine dedicated to Martin Allen at the home of an alleged pedophile. This bizarre development prompted a brief resurgence of interest in the case, but there were no new leads from it. In 2009, police told Allen's brothers, Kevin and Jeffrey, that the files on the investigation had been destroyed in a flood. That same year, Allen's parents conceded that they have no hope of seeing him alive again. Believing him to have been abducted, they stated their wish to simply know what happened and why. Tom Allen died in 2012, the father. Guess he knows now. Yikes. Okay. In 2012, police um, started a number of new investigations into child abuse allegations dating back over the previous 30 years. This included a reinvestigation of claims of systemic child abuse by an alleged pedophile ring at the Elm Guest House during the 70s and 80s. The location of the Elm Guest House, along with the alleged activities of the individuals involved there, have led to media speculation that Allen and Vishal Mayrotra May were abused and murdered by the pedophiles operating there. That was the case I came across, um, Vishal's. Um, I didn't choose his case because, first of all, I was worried about pronouncing his name correctly, but also if I recall, there wasn't a whole lot there. Um, I may have to go back. Another dude claims he saw three boys be murdered by this pedophile ring. I remember reading about knife thought we touched on this particular pedophile thing. I seem to remember something about the Elm Guest House, but I could be wrong. In 2015, very good news, some of the evidence that was thought lost was rediscovered. In 2016, Operation Malswick, which was the pedophile um, investigation, superseded Operation Midland and was, for, oh no, I'm sorry, Operation Midland was the pedophile one. Operation Malswick superseded it and was formed specifically to reinvestigate the Allen case. Police questioned Sidney Cook, a pedophile gang leader who was jailed for life in 1985. Good place for him. I don't have a phone number because this is England. But, um, yeah, good place for Mr. Sidney. Good, good place for him. I hope he stays there forever. Um, because, you know, we don't need him on the streets doing unspeakable things to children. I mean, that's what a pedophile is. Um, someone who does unspeakable things to children. Um... 
in, in a certain way. Um, they treat children in a way, in an adult way, in a way that only two consenting adults should be together. Um, and he belongs in jail forever and ever, amen. Throw away the key. No, don't throw away the key, because when he dies, you're going to get him out of there. But uh, leave him there until he dies. Because, yeah. <laughs> um, excuse me. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you think you know anything in this case, um, you know, call Scotland Yard, call Interpol. Um, if you don't know what Interpol is, Interpol is Europe's sort of um, international police. Actually, I think they run in Asia, too. Um, they're, they're like the international police for the world. They're sort of like the world's FBI. Kind of a thing. Um, so, yeah, do that if you have any information. I'm just glad that they found some of the case files. Anyway, God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.